When you think about the term 3D printing, it could drive your imagination crazy if you don't know the context. But it's a much simpler process than you might think. Or at least that's what I want you to believe in. So what exactly is 3D printing? 3D printing is the manufacturing of solid objects by building materials layer by layer in accordance to the specifications of a digital model. The process of 3D printing is quite useful as it can make new objects very fast and detailed compared to other traditional manufacturing techniques. For instance, an engineer can test a lot of new designs and not have to wait for someone else to make them. Or people at home can fabricate personal objects with no time. Now let's dive into some history. The first documentation of 3D printing can be traced back to 1980s in Japan, when Hideo Kodama was trying to find a way to develop a rapid prototyping system. He came up with a layer-by-layer -layer approach for manufacturing, using a photosensitive resin that was polymerized by the UV light. Kodama is most often credited as being the first inventor of this manufacturing system, which is an early version of the modern SLA machine. I know, a lot of terms. SLA, also known as stereolithography, is a form of 3D printing technology used for creating models, prototypes, and production parts, layer by layer, using a photochemical process to form polymers. The first person to actually build a 3D printer was Charles Hull. He was a furniture builder who was frustrated with not being able to create small parts, and as a solution, developed a system for creating 3D models by curing photosensitive resins using radiation, particles, or lasers. As the spatial data from a digital file reached the extruder of a 3D printer, the object was created one layer at a time. Consequently, the first SLA 3D printer, SLA-1, was released by its company, 3D Systems Corporation, in 1988. In fact, SLA is one of the numerous manufacturing processes for 3D printing. Another process is the Selective Laser Sintering, aka SLS, which was patented by Carl Deckard in 1988. This system used powders instead of liquid. Fused Deposition Modeling, FDM, was also patented around the same time by Scott Crump. We can say that these times were the birth of manufacturing techniques for 3D printing. The difference between FDM is that SLS and SLA use sunlight, while FDM filament is directly extruded from a heated nozzle. This technology is the most common 3D printing technique we see today. I mean, think of it as heating Play-Doh and playing with computers, except this time, they're real. While these technologies are not the only types of 3D printing methods, they served as the building blocks for the technology to grow. Other methods of 3D printing include digital light process, multi-jet fusion, polyjet, direct metal laser sintering, and electron beam melting. During the early 2000s, bioengineering was also making important progress. Scientists at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine printed the first human urinary bladder using artificial materials and coating with the cells from patients. This way, the body would not reject the foreign 3D printed bladder. This was also the decade where many advances in medical 3D printing were happening. Scientists and technologists 3D printed a kidney, a complex prosthetic leg, and bioengineered blood vessels using donated human cells. In 2006, the first commercial 3D printer, MakerBot, was released by Stratasys, changing the game in terms of manufacturing industrial parts. Users could send designs to the device in order to print them from multiple materials with different properties. By this time, marketplaces for trading and sharing designs were becoming increasingly popular, which led to a huge interest for 3D printing. Co-founder of MakerBot, Brie Pettis, was receiving media attention, while 3D printing was considered to be the same merit as technologies like social media, e-commerce, and even the web itself. 3D printing? More like 3D revolution. Then, in 2005, open source changed the game for 3D printing. Dr. Adrian Bauer created the RepRap project, which was an open source initiative to create a 3D printer that could build another 3D printer, along with other 3D printed objects. I guess we could say this is 3Dception at its best. Other significant areas where 3D printing can be useful are construction and architecture, which are usually wasteful fields responsible for almost 40% of greenhouse gas emissions. 3D printing has the ability to use cleaner methods of creating cement-based products, like walls, usually at much shorter times compared to typical construction techniques. For instance, multi-planetary architectural and technology design agency AI Space Factory's completely 3D printed habitat suitable for living on Mars called Marsha, or the Bologna Bay 
Space Studio, Mario Cucinella Architects and Wasp's collaboration to create a low-carbon housing prototype called Tecla that is 3D printed using clay are structures that look forward into the future. Notable brands in this sector also include Branch Technology, which utilizes construction-scale freeform 3D printing techniques and digital manufacturing, along with Cobot, with its mission of disrupting the global construction industry through 3D robotics and automation. Talk about efficiency! Today, 3D printing is a mature technology. The major interest and efficiency of industrial platforms grew in the 2010s, as the range of materials available for 3D printing has also grown exponentially, such as bioprinting human tissue, building components, or even organs custom-made for patients. The industry has no plans to slow down. New research and developments in manufacturing are also on the rise, which means that the future of 3D printing is very bright. A 2021 Lux Research report predicts that 3D printing industry will be worth $51 billion by 2030. I guess there's no stopping now. Make sure to check out Pacademy's workshops in the links below. Pacademy is an educational platform powered by Parametric Architecture to spread the idea of using parametric design and computational tools in architecture. Pacademy has broadened its collaboration with pioneering architects and designers, dealing with diverse and numerous topics such as computational design, 3D printing, robotic fabrication, procedural methods, space architecture, metaverse design, design in VR, AR, and many more topics. You you can register and join the live workshops or watch the previous studio's workshop recordings. To learn more, you can visit parametricarchitecture.com slash pacademy. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification to not miss any new uploads. See you at the next episode.